Well guys, welcome to uh, just a little summary section on angular motion, a particular moment of inertia. So just as a quick recap of what we did on uh, just before the screencast finished on uh, screencast one, uh, we had a look at this concept of a kind of somersault. Um, and we looked here at kind of two separate positions. So you've got your first position here, which maybe will be your preparation, or um, you're looking here at an untucked position. And when you have an untucked position, the rotate, rotation radius increases, okay? So why does that happen? Well, there's a couple of things that we need to consider with regard to moment of inertia. So we need to know that that distribution of mass on the axis is further. So the mass there, if you look at the mass going all the way across, further away from the axis, and that straight away, increases the moment of inertia that increases uh, that resistance to rotate so that then directly impacts angular uh, velocity or rotation I think it's important we try we understand it in our head as rotation but the technical term is angular velocity which we'll go on to in the lesson um, so there's a lower angular velocity because there's a higher moment of inertia because the distribution of math mass is further away from the transverse axes there okay so then in contrast, when the actual kind of tuck position happens and there's a forward rotation, okay, on this position, so what happens at tuck there means that the distribution of the mass from the axis is closer, so the mass there is closer to the transverse axis. This then, of course, reduces or lowers the moment of inertia, which increases angular velocity. Now, just quickly, I'm, I'm sure you can see it. There's an absolute vital relationship here, as I said earlier in screencast one. Um, moment of inertia times angular velocity is going to give us angular mo momentum. So let's have a look at how this, this relationship here works then. So the key thing is that we have an understanding that this is a huge relationship, and if one's high, the other's low. So in this case, if the moment of inertia is low, e.g. There's, there's a low resistance, e.g. rotation is going to happen, it means that the, the angular velocity is high. The flip side to that, if moment of inertia is high, okay, e.g. there's a high resistance to rotation, that means directly that uh, angular velocity is going to be low. So that's that. That's that sorted. Now, hopefully you can get those two points in. I think it's really important now, I've talked through it once, then again, on the start of this screencast, I just want you to have a quick go at um, filling this in yourself. So can you have a go at doing that now? Okay, so I'll put this on there. Have a go. See how you feel with it. Okay, there are the three boxes. I'll give you five seconds now to just pause and have a go and either verbally going through that or writing it out. Okay, right. So let's have a look then. So to finish off, I would just like you to make sure um, you feel like your notes and your questions are linked to these key things here. Do you feel that you can uh, define angular motion? Really important. Do we know how to create it? Do we know the three axes um, and then also uh, examples for each of them and can describe them? Are we okay? Have we got good notes and questions based upon moment of inertia um, and maybe a little bit of angular velocity? Obviously, we haven't really covered this. You probably just need to know the relationship between. This is the one we've really focused on. Factors affecting the size of the moment of inertia of a rotating body. Um, okay, so that's that one. We've looked at mass of the body, uh, distribution of the mass from the axis of rotation, and then this relationship here between the moment of inertia and angular velocity. Velocity. Really important you've got that in. Your questions should be linked to this. Um, really take some time and making sure your questions are good and have a go before you come into the tonight and before you come into the lesson. Okay, thank you.